Global Battery Alliance was formed in 2017 to promote a sustainable battery value chain. I'm joined by Benedict Sobotka, CEO of ERG and co-chair of the Global Battery Alliance to find out more. Benedict, a few weeks ago in Davos, the Global Battery Alliance committed to promoting more sustainable battery value chain. Can you tell us more about that? Well, let's, let's take a step back when we talk about the Global Battery Alliance. Why is this so important? Uh, we commissioned the Global Battery Alliance commissioned a report last year to show that without batteries, we will not achieve the Paris goals for the low carbon economy. So they have a great role to play in reducing CO2 emissions, up to 30% of the applicable trans emissions in, in the power sector and transportation sector. So this is very important. And we expect that the total amount or the total volume of batteries required to power the electrification uh, will mean that we'll have to increase the amount of material by about 20 times within this decade. Now that doesn't sound like a big number, but everyone involved in mining knows what it means to, to increase production 20 times. And that has to happen in a sustainable fashion. Sustainable here meaning it must not involve child labor. It must be environmentally compliant. It must be legal. And it must have a sustainability angle, which means we have to give back to the community. So increasing a micro 20 times is probably one of the biggest purchase order the industry has seen. And that's driven by the sustainability target. So sustainability for us is going to be the biggest purchase order in the history of the mining industry. Mm -hmm. Now, the Global Battery Lines, we have a target um, and we've, today we've, we have gathered about 70, just over 70 members of the Global Battery Lines that all have the ambition to implement a sustainable supply chain of battery materials for uh, achieving the Paris goals. Now, we announced at the Davos um, a 10 principles, guiding principles, that we believe are instrumental to ensuring that this supply chain that we're building is, is, is clean. And we want to make sure that customers that have a choice or should have a choice whether the electric vehicle they buy contains a clean battery or not a clean battery, they have to see whether this contains a clean battery. So we want customers to have a choice when it comes to choosing between a sustainably procured, sustainably produced and sustainably manufactured product or something that isn't. At the moment, customers, consumers, they don't have that choice. So if you want to buy an electric vehicle today, you cannot differentiate whether that's been produced in a clean way or not. You cannot. That's why the Global Battery Lines, in addition to agreeing to certain principles that we all want to adhere to across the value chain, we're also planning to introduce a, uh, a battery passport, which will exactly do that. It will give consumers the choice to pick a good product over a not so good product in terms of sustainability. Benedict, in 2018, you introduced a, a blockchain mm -hmm. solution uh, together with IBM. Um, at, at your minds. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, b blockchain is very much about the how, right? So whereas the, when I talked about global battery lines, this is the why and the what. And the how then is, is what is the tool you're going to use to secure the traceability of the material, to make sure that the stuff that goes into the battery, that goes into the end product, is actually sourced in a clean way and to make sure that nobody can gain the system so there's a, there's a level playing field. So blockchain is one way to to secure the traceability and secure that the material is clean. Um, and we've, we've experimented with a number of, uh, of, of solutions. We've uh, done one project with IBM, uh, which is particularly around cobalt. Uh, we're now working on a second one as part of the, uh, um, we call it the Seven Sisters, a group of uh, large mining companies of the World Economic Forum, where we both, uh, we're looking to implement a blockchain solution for capturing, monitoring, measuring the CO2 emissions of a raw material from the mine to the end customer. Um, and we've got a number of, uh, of companies, large companies such as Antifagasta, Glencore, Anglo-American uh, and their subsidiary De Beers, which is very uh, advanced in terms of blockchain and traceability of material. We are trying to establish if we want to achieve a low carbon economy, we have to make sure that the materials that go into this low carbon economy for this, for this massive transformation will not have a CO2 footprint that outweigh all the benefits that we want to achieve. So this is important for us. So, so blockchain is, is, a, is a great tool because it's, it's very difficult to, to change it. Right? You, we all, you will own the truth. And finally, Benedict, um, what is ERG, ERG doing uh, to help take children out of mines in the DRC? Hmm. This is something, this is a topic that's really dear at my heart and I spend a lot of uh, time and, and effort um, on on trying to address the glaring injustice of distribution of wealth. 
I give you the example of my, my famous favorite example is the mobile phone. When you buy a mobile phone, it costs a thousand dollars in the store. The material in the mobile phone is two hundred dollars. The battery is three dollars, and the cobalt that's almost exclusively mined in the DRC, and which means you cannot actually build a mobile phone without the cobalt from the DRC is only thirty cents out of one thousand dollars, which gives you an idea of where the how the value is currently distributed. So you've got companies that are worth more than the market cap of entire continents. And then you have a country like the DRC, which has got a GDP of $27 billion, right? Without the Congo, there would not be mobile phones, full stop. Without the Congo, there would not be the electric vehicle. It just wouldn't exist because the current technology cannot do without cobalt. Now, so for us, it's important. We have to make sure we give something back. And as part of the Global Battery Lines, we are introducing, we call them uh, impact projects, because we want more companies that are active along the value chain of batteries to give back to the communities where the original material has been sourced. And this should be around child labor, preventing child labor. It should be around education. It should be around alternative livelihoods. Because of course, we can uh, we can just make something illegal. Right? There can be a regulatory environment that, that uh, artisanal mining is illegal, but you have to create alternative livelihoods. And that's something we want to rally. We want to rally other companies around, part of the global battery lines and others that are very welcome to join us. And of course, our own projects, we do a lot in uh, in education, uh, we run multiple schools with thousands of thousands of children, child protection centers for the for the very young children, um, and alternative library programs for for the parents and particularly the mothers, because ultimately this comes very much down to how to empower the women in these communities. Right, sir. Thank you very much, Benedict, for your time. And remember, for more insightful videos, be sure to follow our YouTube channel.